All right, brilliant. So welcome, Naomi. So this is part of the seven steps coaching method that I teach people. So this is seven steps because there's seven chakras. And we're going to work with you and we'll go through each of the chakras. And really it's called seven steps to spiritual alchemy because it turns any negative beliefs or anything limiting in each chakra into a positive transformation. So we use the chakra system as a platform to coach because each chakra holds a life theme. So today is the first session and we're going to work on the root chakra. So the root chakra governs your foundations. It really is the kind of, um, it's how you're manifesting your physical reality and how you currently feel in life. So when we think about building a house, we first need to make sure that those foundations are firm and set in place so the house isn't going to fall down with a, you know, a storm or five years time it starts to crumble. So we need to really focus on the root, make sure that you have a vision in your mind of what it is that you want for your life so you can bring that into your physical reality. And then we look at any limited beliefs that are lying there as well. So the root chakra is kind of formed between the ages of naught to seven. And that's when we absorb all our biggest childhood conditioning and imprinting phase. We're in that theta brainwave, so we're literally just absorbing everything and it's all being downloaded to us. And it's kind of creating and molding the person who we're going to be and how we're going to see the world through this shaped vision that's imprinted into us. And what this method does, the main thing that it does is it helps strip back all those layers that are not yours. These layers cover up the, I call it the true self. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of strip back, we do, you know, the work can be quite insightful, but what it's doing is it's like, it's getting to the core of who you are before you were told to think, feel, be, do a certain way that might not have been in total alignment to your, your true self or the reason why you're here really. Um, so I know you filled out the, chakra assessment mm -hmm. and the soul life satisfaction yeah. form thanks for that yes. and you got some insights i mean it was great to read uh to see where the imbalances were and a lot of it it's around creativity and probably mm. being your authentic self yeah. isn't it a lot of it is yeah 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 i was really like wow okay this is going to be great to work with mm. you um so really on the chakra assessment I'll see if I can get it up. Oh, <laughs> God help me. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> <laughs> I did try, but no. Um, is it down here? I did, I did. I tried to get it ready. Is it on, it's on the email, isn't it? It's all right. So you can open it from there. Yeah, don't worry. I, w I won't go into it. Um, yeah, but the, on the chakra assessment, it was the solar plexus mm. and the sacral that was really, you noticed some imbalances mm. there, didn't you? Yeah. Tell me what insights you got just from doing that. Um, so it was useful. It was nice to sit and think and yeah. uh, reflect a bit. I haven't done that properly in a while. Um, and to have it sort of compartmentalised like that was useful. Um yeah, there's there's just been a general sense of dissatisfaction or discontent um, around a lot. Yeah, like you say, a lot around creativity and how I'm expressing who I am, um, how I am being true to myself, hmm. um, and how I've neglecting myself and my passions or my I don't know my interests um, and how I kind of want to be in the world, I guess. So it was useful to see some of them were quite surprising. Some of the nevers. I, I think I said I wanted like a sometimes box because yeah. like, occasionally I do that, but yeah. it's not definitely not mostly. Um, yeah, and, and, and kind of that, um, that thing of having a lot of hats and a lot of things that I'm juggling. Um, and kind of, if you think about the 
like the hierarchy of needs thing yeah i'm very in, in lots of ways i feel like i'm just surviving getting yeah. fed <laughs> and yeah. you know and just getting through the day a bit although that's not that's not really my reality and i've got lots of things in place that are supporting mm. me but um i sometimes feel like i'm wading a bit yeah. um so it was interesting to see that in that context of those like broken up like that um yeah and things which i didn't think i was lacking in when if i'm really honest i am mm. like um, what like what like the fun yeah and 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 the, the creativity and the, some of the connection mm. um and like the being authentic and having people around me where i can um be mm. myself mm. um but also the other on the other side kind of the i know that i'm a, like a doer and i help people a lot but to write it down in that sense of yeah i'm always putting other people's needs first so it's a bit like oh <laughs> just a bit more sort of a spotlight on it being a great thing and yet sometimes unhealthy um yeah yeah and the, the balance is the key word i think yeah um of, of things like that yeah yeah there was a lot there's a lot um, yeah where do you feel your biggest imbalance lies in your life at the minute um probably the I guess the idea of, of rest versus um, I get kind of what rest looks like, like the not doing and the, the doing stuff that feeds me. Yeah. Um, so I, instead I just kind of sit in this, not really resting because I feel either guilty or dissatisfied in it, but then I'm not doing things that actually feed me and give me life and fulfillment. Um, so then I just throw myself into work or helping everyone else feel great <laughs> yeah um because i'm not sure what to do um so i guess that's one probably a main imbalance okay um, yeah that's great and, yeah and i guess probably also like um present and future I think that's probably a more bigger overarching theme of like purpose and direction and stuff um and also being in the moment definitely yeah so, yeah so those things, those last things come with when you have a strong foundation. Yeah. So everything rests on how you, how you mm -hmm. secure and safe you feel, because if you don't, you, you'll do what you do now, which is be busy because it's, it's running away from, or, you know, yeah. running towards something, but, but not actually grounding and making real what it is that will bring you complete satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And then you can be, and then you can tap into your higher purpose as well. Yeah. So you yeah. acknowledge that you've got this. Mm. Yeah, it's getting that foundation. Yeah. To be able to go to the. Yeah. Mm. And that, that comes with the security of living an authentic life. Yeah. Um, because you're not satisfied in the way that you're, the things that are coming into you or happening in your life, you're actually like, mm, yeah. Mm. That, mm. yeah so we want to kind of bring in that element of when you do things well a certain amount of your life is done through your passion and your choice not through the needs of others or you satisfying a need which is to be busy mm -hmm. so okay so how we're going to run the session is we're going to i'm going to play you a little meditation in a minute which is a root chakra meditation. We're going to see what comes up for you. So we're basically going to ask your subconscious mind, which it will do. It'll play with us because you're here participating yeah. mm -hmm. and you want to do the work basically. Yeah. Um, so your subconscious mind will throw up what it is that's really needs to be present mm -hmm. in this session. And then we will just go from there. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now I've got a pre-recorded meditation because it's got background music so i'm going to try and play that <laughs> it's gonna work it's gonna work <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna try and play that to you but any questions beforehand are you okay with meditation yeah yeah, yeah. no problem with closing your eyes and things That's like that fine. all right so do you yeah, just yeah. relax get yourself comfortable so put you down slightly yeah <laughs> 
And then you just set the intention, Naomi, that, um, you know, you really want to work on this. You really want to surrender. You want to let go of what it is. You want to become aware mm. of what you can do to move past this current problem, this current situation. Mm. So you can start to climb up those steps, really. Mm. I mean, the seven steps is taken from Maslow's needs, mm. but this yeah. takes us to a soul awakening level, you know. Yeah. So, okay, <coughs> play now. Okay, so make yourself as comfortable as possible. Allow yourself to close your eyes and take your attention within. Taking nice deep breaths, breathing into the heart, So the heart space becomes expansive and full of wonderful light. Allowing your body to become filled with light. And as your body becomes filled with light, you feel totally embraced. You feel safe, supported, and nurtured by this spiritual light. Just allow yourself to go deeper and deeper into this wonderful feeling within. And sensing now a beautiful red, dense color of light flood into your mind and flow all the way down your body and out through your feet. As this light flows through you, you start to feel an inner strength resonate within you. Taking your attention to your root chakra, imagining a red light spinning at the base of your spine. Visualize the energy from Mother Earth grounding you as the energy flows up through your feet, your legs to the base of your spine, centering, strengthening and supporting you. One of the most beautiful aspects of spiritual awakening is dis the discovery of one's own power. In each moment, we have a choice. We can choose to live differently by releasing what no longer serves us. When we release certain fears, beliefs or negative behaviors we create space for more joy positivity flow and abundance to come in as its replacement so take this opportunity to bring to mind now all the limiting beliefs, negative feelings, insecurities, and fears, any blocks that no longer serve you, 
and are blocking your spiritual flow. And then imagine or get a sense of these being absorbed through your feet and being cleansed in the earth below you. As this releasing and cleansing takes place, all the wonderful experiences, feelings, and exciting opportunities that you're going to create start to flood in to the base of your spine, filling that root chakra. And imagine this beautiful spiral of red light filling your feet, your legs, and base of spine. As you repeat the following mantra to yourself. Today I am ready for change. Today I am ready to let go. Today I am ready to trust, to see clearly, to love unconditionally, to walk my authentic path with the truth of who I am. just taking some nice slow deep breaths allowing that energy to penetrate from your head to the tips of your toes And in a moment, I will count you back from three to one, where you will open your eyes and feel wide awake. Three, just starting to feel your back supported against where you're resting. Two, wiggling your fingers and toes. And one, opening your eyes being refreshed and wide awake brilliant well done okay let me just make sure that i'm off okay cool mm. there we go <coughs> how are you feeling um yeah okay it's quite emotional oh, um what came up in, in in parts and then quite there was, a, there was definitely a bit of resistance as well yeah. from me um um stuff about my mum came up thoughts about my mum and my mum's beliefs or thoughts or attitudes um and then also um god yeah whatever that is <laughs> and the trust has made me think about that and my previous or current or whatever faith <laughs> Yeah, and journey with that, and and kind of the the idea of trust was quite. It's it's just it's tied up in a lot for me. Right, absolutely. That's so, the crux of it, you know. Yeah, that's the absolute heart of this whole conversation, mm. and why you're feeling the way that you are. Mm. It's yeah. trust, and it's it's the same for most most of us, you know. Mm. Anybody who feels that they can't be authentic, it's because there's a lack of trust and there's been mistrust. Mm -hmm. While you were doing that, um, I use a system, it's a bit like spiritual kinesiology, so mm -hmm. I tune into your energy and I find the root cause. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, it was a, an emotional pattern in the uh, throat chakra of uh, being misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Does that resonate with you? Yeah. 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 
and a f- fear of that happening or a fear of that happening. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. So how strong is the fear of that happening? Um, I think I've suppressed that fear mm. and learned to just not say how I feel. Yeah. Or um, choose my words very carefully. Yeah. I say that I'm good at BSing. Yeah. So please call me out on that. Um, <laughs> um, like I'm good. I don't mind like interviews and things like this because I can yeah. choose my words and like I'm all right at that sort of thing. But in a way that is kind of uh, sometimes. Yeah. BS. Um, and also just that thing of sitting on the fence. So I, it's both like a, I can see the bigger picture. So I can see both sides, but it's also a, I don't want to choose. Yeah. So it's like that thing of being misunderstood for who I am or what I believe or yeah what I'm about. Yeah. Um, because what's, what happens if you're misunderstood or what's the perception around it? Um, it I'm trying to think like what that route is. I'm trying to think for a time when I haven't thought it or, you know, where it, like. Yeah. So deep yeah mm. now it might not ever have happened to you you know we can explore yeah. it. it might never have happened to you it can be like a, f- a, a parent or mm. or you just observing a parent's mm. behavior and mimicking yeah. that yeah and somebody saying to you you know don't ever let don't ever tell people how you really feel because yeah, that's literally you'll hurt them. yeah or whatever. I've had it. I, yeah i remember my mum's best friend saying oh you shouldn't cry so much because other kids will know how you're feeling and pick on that or whatever oh uh, wow massive so, then. yeah so then i was like oh i won't i won't um show my feelings in front of people because that's dangerous or mm. um that's kind of related i guess it's not quite being misunderstood but no but it makes yeah. sense doesn't it it's, it does well it is a misunderstanding mm. you know i'm crying because i'm expressing how i feel and i feel this way right now and it's almost like if you if you do that then then you're then you're you're meat basically you're gonna get targeted yeah. and you're gonna get picked on mm. so best not tell people how you really feel eh? yeah yeah and put a brave face on things are you the type of person that puts a brave face on i things? cry a lot yeah. <laughs> got over the crying thing but yeah. i cry a lot but it's almost in the, it's a like, i cry when i'm angry i cry when i'm stressed i cry when i'm emotional about anything happy yeah. or sad like it's my go-to but almost in a in a just in a like if we're having an argument or something I'll tear up and then it's like well we can't have an argument now because you're crying like it just does that make like, you feel misunderstood yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm like I, it's there I want to carry on this conversation or argument or whatever but I'm I've gone to crying because it's kind of safe God, in yeah. a way as well as or disarms maybe but it's also not what I want to do in every situation. Um, yeah, I cry a lot. That's interesting how that mm. that comment. Now it might not be the thing, but no. it's too significant for you to remember that woman saying that mm. to you. And then, okay, so let's look at it from two sides. So somebody says that to you, and then we form a belief that, well, if I cry, I'm weak, I'm vulnerable, I'll get picked on. Yeah. But then later on in life, it's kind of like a bit of a default thing. And maybe later on in life, we've learned that the secondary gain from that mm. in some way, shape or form. But also just to, to, to do that, it must be quite frustrating for you. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's kind of, I'm all for having a good cry. Yeah. I think it's really cathartic and good. But yeah. um yeah it gets in the way sometimes yeah. of me actually expressing like if I'm annoyed with someone it's it's like a protective thing of like yeah oh I won't have to say how I actually feel I'm just going to cry and then they'll know that it's not okay okay yeah but I won't actually get my yeah point across or wow. or whatever I mean it's, it happens in some situations more than others so it happens yeah. it's more likely to happen with my husband maybe with my family yeah people that you um, trust a bit more yeah yeah, yeah. where is it uh, in what in a work situation yeah. and often with friends i 
don't cry so much. I work, I've cried at my work a little bit. Um, so what happens then if you can't cry? Do you mask up how you feel or? I don't know if I, it's a conscious masking. Maybe it is, but I don't feel like the need to as much. Um, I wonder if at work I'm a bit more clinical. So often I'm, I'm in the zone of therapist or whatever. So I've got my therapist hat on. Whereas if I, it's my, the times I have cried at work have been when I'm in, in the office. Yeah. So it's a bit less guarded because we're. Yeah. It's, it's often in our supervision times or when I walked in and someone said, You're right. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. Um, so I think that is, I don't think it's unhealthy when I've cried at work. I think it's yeah. always been quite. And I think I'll bring it home potentially. Some, occasionally, not, not on the whole, but generally if I'm crying at home about work stuff, it'll be the residue of the day. Or yeah. Something. But it's more, I'm more like to cry about, um, yeah, it's when I'm, I can't get my feelings out. Yes. Yeah. A, a feeling comes up and then it's like. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's something definitely around you connecting, taking a break, taking a breath, mm. understanding, computing how you actually feel. Yeah. Yeah. And then being able to, the core to, of it. to relay that to the other person. Yeah. Because what would happen with, let's say, I don't know, an associate mm. and, you know, you you really had something off you mm. wanted to get off your chest. Mm. Would you be able to say it or would you mask it? Um, often not in the moment. Yeah. But I might come back to it. If, okay. Yeah. If, I'd, if it was on my mind, I would probably come back to it and psych myself up. Yes. Okay. So um, it needs that. Yeah. But yeah, it, often in the moment, I'm not very good at going. Hey, I don't feel like I don't think that's okay, or okay. unless it's really obvious, if it's like yeah. a real injustice, but um, and needs to be said in the moment. Okay. But um, but I think it sometimes spills into my work. Mm. I'm just really, like today. I had a group, and there was one kid who was kind of breaking some of our rules, but it was kind of a bit murky whether he was or not. Yeah. And actually, on reflection, I probably should have sent him back to class sooner or sent him back to the class because he wasn't making it safe for everyone okay. um but I kind of allowed more than I should have yeah um I mean there were some logistical things of actually getting him back to class yeah you know, on my own and look after group and stuff but um I think I I kind of sometimes it's that thing of oh just let it go mm -hmm. so sometimes when things happen I'll just be like oh it's fine it's fine it's fine yeah yeah and then it all comes out so it's that thing of yeah okay it's not because I'm quite to a degree I'm quite laid back and I'm quite like yeah whatever yeah and I can let things slide but there's some things which really hit a nerve okay and that if I let them slide well I haven't because it's still there niggling on my mind so yeah yeah, yeah. so occasionally I do speak up about them but it's often okay like you have to really <laughs> start in the zone yeah. yeah how does that then come across like when you've had to psych yourself up mm. does that come across differently to when if you think you would have been just said it in the moment yeah I think if I say it in the moment it'd be made more, more casual and yeah. much more like conversation oh you just said that I don't like that yeah whereas it's like you know that thing you said three days ago it really hurt my feelings and it gets it I'm more emotionally charged it it's I can imagine it's the idea that I've held on to that. It's like, oh, wow, that's that's a big deal. When actually, if I just said it in the moment, it would have yeah. been dealt with. And I know this. Yes. And, yes. It's, and I think because it happens quite infrequently, maybe because I do allow quite a lot, and I'm like, nah, it's fine. When it's not fine, I'm not used to then confronting it. So I wonder if it's maybe something about um, confronting the little things as and when. Yeah. Practice. Well, it'll be interesting because now we've had this conversation, mm. it will be interesting for you to see just how much this shows up in your life. Yeah. And it can be even the silly things like, you you know, you're in waiting in Starbucks for a coffee and something happens where you can say, or just, just say your mm. truth. Like it could yeah. be, you know, to the, to the girl, I really like your eyeshadow yeah so it can be it can be pleasant things yeah, yeah. but it's just practicing yeah being and I think, yeah I think I do second guess that like, even with stuff like that it's like that thing of yeah talking to 
like, I'm quite an outgoing person, but I get, I can get, especially if I'm in a new situation, it's kind of, I'm either, hi, nice to meet you, or it's like a, yeah. <laughs> and then they say something, I'm like, oh, no, you're safe. Oh, hi. Yeah. And it's like that thing of not actually, when I, often I'm sitting there going, I just want to say hi. But I just, <laughs> yeah. This is quite common in the new thing, but it's like you say, like, those little things that don't have to be such a big deal is that yeah. overthinking it um, yes making yeah it, definitely yeah. on a scale of one to ten ten being obviously the maximum mm. uh how how much does this feeling emotion statement of being misunderstood mm. how big is that in your life i've never really thought about it as that statement but in what we've unpacked i'd probably say about seven or eight yeah seven and a half maybe yeah yeah um, yeah because it, it's that thing of like when you put it like that in the pleasant things as well it's like are they going to think that I'm this or that or, um which is strange because I don't really think of myself as someone who cares too much what people think of me mm -hmm. I'm quite confident and stuff so I don't think of that as a thing but actually when I bury down to it it is there quite a lot so you're already presuming I'm going to be misunderstood, so I might yeah. not say anything. Yeah. The fear yeah, yeah. of being misunderstood is yeah. overriding any I, other outcome that could happen. Totally, and I push it down so much that, because it doesn't matter, mm. it doesn't matter if I tell that girl I like her earrings, it doesn't matter if I, yeah. then I just, it's just become a pattern, I guess. Yes. Um, yeah. Do you think, um, obviously we're not ending the session, but I just feel it's relevant that, obviously because we've gone there um to say do you feel capable or, or are you up for giving yourself a bit of a challenge over the weekend mm. with this in mm. mind yeah. and to start to push yourself out yeah. of comfort yeah. zone, just so you can see because you've got such a core belief of you will be misunderstood mm. you already have the consequence mapped out in your brain yeah so, we need yeah. to change that we need to change that and tell your nervous system that actually yeah. th there can be different outcomes to the one you're fixated on so let's try it see what cool. see what experiences and outcomes you can create for yourself some oh, might be amazing some might be crap yeah you know? <laughs> but who knows that face, yeah. <laughs> okay yeah no that's that's good it feels like actionable i think if i'm not thinking because I think sometimes I'm like I have to say when I am really upset about something and actually it's not necessarily that it might be oh it annoyed me when you didn't wash the dishes like yeah as yeah. well as nice things yeah, yeah. I think I just need to I need to be held accountable I think to push myself in that sense all you're doing is you you are you are starting to communicate internally first and externally better mm. more yeah effectively yeah and then it's going to allow you because you can't you won't trust yourself you won't trust life to allow you to be authentic until you start to become more comfortable with who you are mm. so the creativity and authenticity will stem naturally from the back of you being more comfortable with who you are yeah and to do that yeah you get in touch with yourself create different experiences so you prove to yourself that your core mm. belief isn't actually true in all situations yeah. and then you can start to live in, a, in alignment with a new truth which yeah. is it's safe to be me yeah yeah okay so uh let me just see where i want to go all right this will be interesting for us to do then this is a uh, letting go technique I'm just going to ask you a load of questions. Don't really want you to have much time to think about it. Okay. Just want you to answer them quite quickly. So we're just going to see where this takes us. So this is letting go, um, and I'll read it to you. So before we can let go of our past, we must clearly identify the things that are holding us back. Only then can we learn to heal ourselves. The following exercise is designed to help identify the things blocking our progress and our healing. So I'm literally just going to keep asking you these questions. I'm going to ask you quite quickly. <coughs> I don't want your conscious mind to kind of get in the way mm. and um, 
come up with an answer it thinks it should should say okay so just answer as quickly as you can okay um, to get what i want i must let go of fear okay there's a part of me that does not want to want to give up fear because it's familiar the benefit of not letting go of fear is i don't have to try yeah however the benefit of letting go of fear is freedom yeah if anything were possible i would do what i want to make that happen i need to breathe what i need to let go of the most is fear of failure okay what really needs to change is how i see the world what small step can you action straight away to implement the change saying hello to people <laughs> yes saying hello to people how do you do that <laughs> yeah. yeah you're not doing too bad since i jumped on here with me yeah yeah <laughs> that's, your first no, that's the thing step. yeah i think it's it's yeah it's weird because it's not something i necessarily think of as like i said i don't think of it as my identity as like timid and shy or kind of scared of people i work i meet new people every day i love it yeah but that's when i'm in control to a degree probably. Yeah. it's interesting you say that um quite often we create these uh perception you know personas, personas of our, yeah and we do that we, we all do that mm -hmm. um you know, I do that now when I'm with you, I'll be different yeah. when I'm with my son. You know, we just yeah, do yeah. that. We wear different hats. But quite often <clears throat> we we do that because we're like, look, look at me, this person here. Don't don't look at this person yeah. here. Please don't look at this person here. Yeah, totally. You know, we do that all the time and most people do that. Yeah. Being okay. aware of that. Mm. So so powerful. Yeah. So powerful. My God, if you can really embed that and what it means especially to being authentic if you yeah. really think about that let it penetrate that is an absolute key to your transformation become aware of all those times when you are being inauthentic mm. and change them so so subtly change them you will still be that happy bubbly person mm. but you will be really authentic mm, yeah and i think that's the thing i've had so many hats in the last however many years like lots of new hats that i've put yeah. on that i'm that come with assumptions or come with like preconceived ideas and now it's like trying to do them wear them well but also <clears throat> yeah find my own authentic way of wearing them and also without them on who am i exactly that's the, i think that's a big thing for me that that is absolutely it. you've just nailed it there um who who are you without having to wear the happy hat mm. you know so let let me try this with you then this is looking at archetypes so basically what i'm hearing in your story is you've got this persona this energy archetype of let's say the happy the happy girl and then you've got another energy archetype of the person who wants to be authentic or who is truly authentic is creative who's in the flow mm -hmm. when you think about the well first of all what would you call her if she if you were to give her a movie title or a character name when you're doing the da -da girl mm. like what would you call that um something like golden 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 shine i think golden gold shine. shine yeah yeah great and when you get a, a visual picture of you doing golden shine mm. um tell me like how it makes you feel um it's like affirmed I feel affirmed yeah. by other people yeah um it's quite tiring yeah um there's it it kind of it takes a lot of energy but it does give some energy 
yeah yeah as well um it is praised i said it's kind of like a the firm thing it's like it's it's, it's successful mm. um yeah yeah and 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 loved oh lovely and it's mm. loved okay and in relation to your body where do you feel this energy of, of golden shine within my body or in, in, your body or in relation to where you're mm. sitting is it outside in left it's above so oh. it's kind of it's kind of like my arms up <laughs> but it's yeah. kind of it's and it's high it's okay. high energy yeah high up energy okay um yeah and when you kind of see that energy, does it have a colour or a tone or texture to it at all? There are a lot of yellows, yellows and golds yeah. to it, and it's quite flowing. Okay, yellow, gold, flowing. Okay. And do you like that energy? Does it give you a good feeling, or is it a bit of a mixed bag? It's a bit of a mix, like, yes, and there's, but there's a bit of an uneasiness to it. Yeah. As well. Okay. What don't you like about it? Feels a bit fake. Okay, yeah. Um, it feels like, um, yeah, like a bit of a mask and a bit um, like that energy thing, like taking energy and effort. So draining. Draining, yeah. When you think about that energy drain, hmm. where do you feel it most in your body? In my stomach area. Yeah. Mm, it's kind of going down. Yeah. Across my stomach area. Okay. Yeah. And is that above the navel or below? Above to below. Oh, yeah, so just okay. above. Yeah, so all the way down. So it's kind of okay. just above to just below. That's yeah. so interesting because that's where your energy drain was on the chakra assessment. Mm. Those two, those two areas yeah. there. True. That's really interesting. True. Yeah. All right. That's brilliant. What I'm going to get you to do now is just go back gently into a slight state of meditation. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so quick. So just close your eyes gently. <coughs> okay. All we're going to do is you know where this energy of golden shine is. All I'm going to ask you to do now is so we can move it away from the true self. I'm going to ask you to just allow that energy to move away from the top of the head. Every, you can imagine that every out breath, a breath of air shoots through the top of your head and it pushes it further and further away. And as it goes further away, you might notice that the colour changes. And just push it away to a really nice, safe place for you. And when you feel that's away enough from you so you can have more clarity in your life just give me a nod okay now i just want you to imagine just even just pushing it just a tiny tiny bit further away that's it and just imagine it being locked sealed shut And then when you're ready, Naomi, you can just take a nice breath. Just open your eyes and come back to me. Well done. How did that feel? Mm, interesting. It went kind of white and icy. Did it? Yeah. Mm. Okay. And it was kind of spread out. So at the end, I had to kind of collate it to lock it. <laughs> Good. I feel that. I don't know why. Um, yeah. How did that feel mm. then, pushing it away? Okay, yeah, okay. Um, Sorry, my dog managed to sneak in. Uh, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Wanted part of it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was that okay. It kind of, it moved quite willingly. Did it? Um, it took a few breaths and it was kind of going slowly. Mm -hmm. up. And like I said, it, yeah, it was kind of across the ceiling. So then I kind of, put it together and into the corner 
in a big box. So the box is see-through, but it's still locked and sealed away. Good. Mm. So just becoming aware of the energy of it to realise that it's not you, it's not, it's not the true self. Mm. It's an energy that was created through for you to serve you, mm. but we don't want it to be the one that's in control mm. all the time because yeah. it'll just make you feel like crap, like you're not in alignment. <laughs> with the true self so let's just look at the other archetype mm. the one that is completely authentic mm. what would that be called ragdoll came to mind i don't know if i want that but yeah ragdoll <laughs> yeah are you sure just take a just yeah. take a minute to see I think, I think it is ragdoll but not in maybe the because my automatic thought was being thrown around but yeah. i think it's actually something different to that i've got yeah. an image of it which is different to that so yeah okay. ragdoll all right and ragdoll sums up you being completely authentic mm. yeah Creative. yeah brilliant amazing so just tell me when you are doing ragdoll and it and you're at your peak mm. and you're at your best self just tell me what you see what you feel how your mm. energy looks calm yeah able to pause mm. before speaking and before yeah. doing soft and inviting right comforting mm. and playful playful yeah i can imagine that playful mm. So just have a look at your energy when you're in ragdoll. Mm. Just have a look at your physical body. How do you look physically? Open. Yeah. Yeah, open and kind of it's like that spaciousness of yeah. like breath and um yeah, something that comfort still like, but for myself, my body feels comfortable. Um and kind of no aches and pains and free yeah, yeah yeah that freedom thing yeah that's nice yeah and what about your emotions what emotions are running through you when you're at the peak how do you feel i think i feel lots of things i think there's lots of emotions there but they're not jumbled mm. it's almost like strands of different emotions and they're all just they're just there yeah um so there's there's definitely more excitement i think okay good more more genuine excitement anyway yeah and like a hope as well is that excitement about life or mm. yeah life and the future and yeah. same for hope as well hope for the future um and there's yeah it's almost like they're just all they're all laid out like it's almost like wearing them like the dress is like different emotions that's so um, that's so cool yeah so if someone was to look at you they'd yeah. totally know what they were getting yeah yeah i think yeah i think that's it it's just kind of it's there not necessarily it's not like it's like like little threads like golden threads within a yeah. in a bigger picture but it's yeah. a sort of like anger happiness love. yeah they're just all there and you can know what which ones lit up or which ones kind yeah. of re relevant so it's like about clarity clarity it's clear it's mm. like it's authentic it is what it is you yeah. get what you see type yeah. of thing yeah. yeah yeah and mentally what happens to you mentally what thoughts are there what beliefs even mm. there's like a i can do this yeah that's for whatever i'm doing and uh uh, life is good um it's almost like all the boxes are kind of ticked and yeah just contentment i guess yeah really. like everything's kind of yeah manageable it's not necessarily everything's perfect yeah either. it's just like everything's manageable and i've got what i need to deal with it yeah that you can do this like yeah, you're you, oh. can do that. you got this yeah yeah it's that kind of vibes yeah yeah empowered yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. that comes back to your foundations mm. safe secure you can handle this yeah 
it's not going to be perfect all the time. Some days yeah. it'll be great and some days it won't. But either way, you've got this. Yeah. You can do this. And just looking at the spiritual part mm. when you're in ragdoll, mm. what happens to you spiritually? How connected do you feel to yourself, to others, to your goals? Yeah, really connected in terms of like, like I think acceptance is a big thing for my journey, other people's journey, their, you know, whatever they're up to. <laughs> yeah. Um, and kind of just meeting people where they're at. I think yeah. is that the biggest thing like so that's really lovely so that's like yeah. non-judgment non yeah. isn't it I think not having judgment for myself so therefore not having it for other people it's kind oh, of like yeah just uh yeah acceptance and um not yeah not fearful about uh fitting in a box or yeah or, yeah or knowing all the answers or anything like that it's just like a it is what it is and well you know what that is don't you that is like pure like authenticity that's like you know what you be you mm-hmm. and I'll be me yeah like giving someone else the space to completely be them yeah I mean you know we do we ever do that I know like, yeah you know because we've got so many judgments yeah on ourselves first and then that gets projected out onto others yeah. so if you can really use that spiritual part of you that you just said yeah turn that inward allow yourself to be you yeah. bring that gift to you first to yeah. them yeah put it to to other others. people yeah that will be the type of relationships that you then create, mm. which, you know, is beautiful. Yeah. Just before we end the session, I am going to give you an affirmation to use, um, to tap. Have you heard of tapping? We have, yeah. yeah. So do it a bit differently. We don't, don't do the normal tapping out of the thing but I'm going to find an affirmation for you Mm. the one that's right for you and I'll show you how to tap it okay so the affirmation is change is freedom of the old and makes way for the new Mm. does that make sense yeah okay i think so freedom is the of is a bit weird but freedom change is freedom from the old to make it from that doesn't read properly yeah change is freedom from the old and makes way for the new does that make sense yeah it does yeah okay all right so do you know the tapping points uh vaguely you can remind me yeah <laughs> oh yeah that's it yeah that's it so and literally just keep saying this so change is freedom, freedom from the old and make way for the new. new and then you do it there oh, yeah change is freedom from the old and makes way, make for, way the for the new and then side of the eye, yeah. Freedom from the old from the old and makes way for the new. And then under the eye. Change is freedom from the old and makes way for the new. And then uh, change is freedom from the old and makes way for the new. Change is freedom from the old and makes way for the new. And then collarbone. Change is freedom from the old and makes way for the new. And then bra strap. Change is freedom from the old and makes way for the new. And then top of the head. And it's freedom from the old and makes way for the new. Then I would just kind of start, take a nice deep breath in, just see where you are with that. And I would just do that at least once a day, if mm. not three times a day, if you mm. can bring it in. Yeah. But I think that's a good affirmation from you. Change is freedom from the old and makes way for the new. If any of those words need tweaking mm. to suit you better, yeah. um, then do it, then just change it it's got to make it suit you. Will you remember those tapping? Yes. Remind me. I'm just going to drop them down because I do. It felt. I remind when as we're doing it. I was like, oh yeah. So I, think hand. I, I think I've got a a, a, tech, a, a procedure technique that cool. I can send you. But it's yeah, like, that's right. It's, it's hand, hand, eye, eye, temple, eye. Yeah. yeah. 
brow temple under eye under eye under nose under nose yeah chin and then collarbone, collarbone underarm bra strap top of head cool yeah okay Probably. anything you'd like to end the session on how have you felt during this <laughs> weird and wacky session <laughs> great no it makes a lot of sense like there's a lot of stuff that ties in with my training and my um stuff of the, the archetypes and roles and role theory and um, yeah so it makes a lot of sense but it's nice to kind of i mean give time to think about this stuff <laughs> um and to like yeah get your intuition on it as well and tie some things together exactly um, yeah, and hopefully it'll give you more clarity now you've pushed mm -hmm. away golden shine and um uh ragdoll as well like think about where that image is and mm -hmm. we don't want you to suddenly then become you know overload you with this person because yeah that might not be the true self either mm -hmm. that's another yeah. energy archetype so we just want you as you say mm -hmm. in the driving seat yeah knowing that you can tap into many different facets mm -hmm. of yourself but yeah. all coming back to this in a way that spiritual part of you that mm -hmm. goes is this authentic am i being yeah. authentic and I'm, am i allowing space for others to be authentic yeah. wow yeah so give yourself that little task you said I will. saying hello to people yeah, I will, yeah. <laughs> don't get arrested yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was misunderstood i was just saying hi <laughs> <laughs> like, i'm marie made me do it it's like, yeah. <laughs> so i'll hook up with you and yeah. we'll make arrangements for your next session yeah all right, nice to meet you. you. And you. you take, take care. care. See you Bye. soon. Bye. Bye.